Hello folks. Well, we've all probably seen these foam gliders that are basically for hand launching. They come in pairs in the box and it works out to be about 18 bucks each. I looked at the pictures on, on their ad noting there are many ways to make it RC as you can see. Well, these drawings are deceiving because, you know, there's no wiring, no hookups, no battery location or anything important to know in this. So you got to figure all that out. That's what I'm going to do. It said they sell a motorizing kit for it too, but for more money. Well, since I already have all that, I felt this a good project to pass a little more time during the winter. But in reality, it took a lot more engineering to make this thing work. Here I'm going to show you what I tried and each failure until success. The first thing I tried was to put one of my Birdie XRC systems on it, and that was easy. Here's how that went. Man, it's deep out here. Oh, okay. I have to show it that hard. <laughs> it's pretty windy, actually. <laughs> okay, not enough power, so I decided to take the motors and RC unit off of one of my mini storm launchers. Well, since this glider is so light, it should work, right? Well, here's how that went. Here we go. Man. Promising, but with such close couple motors, it would not turn. Well next, I decided, okay, I need to make an elevator and a rudder. This is going to make it a three-channel motor glider, similar to my Breed Eater cells. Well, this is where it gets busy, and I have to engineer the part that's not included in any directions. First, I had to cut out the elevators and rudder. I had to make the elevators slightly smaller so they wouldn't rub. On top of that, the elevators are split. That means they now must be connected somehow. So I fabricated a wire and installed it. I used small zip ties for the hinges, all done with amazing foam tack glue. I then added servos and control horns and made push rods. So one elevator and one with the control horn was going up further than the other because this foam is so flexible and thin here. So I had to make a rear connector and that works pretty good. Well, another problem is the fuselage solid, so you cannot get the servo wires in or anything else. You've got to cut it all out if you're going to do that. So I just mounted everything on top. I also had to get a receiver now. I tried my lemon first, which I switched to orange later due to some glitching in the lemon. Well then I had to find a battery and a place to mount it and a speed controller with a BEC. I used a 1000 milliamp 11.1 .1 LiPo and mounted it here, knowing I needed nose weight. Well next I needed to mount the motor. I cut the nose off and used the motor mount and long screws with foam tack to mount it. So since this is a prototype, I just let it all hang out on top. Well, all of my design consideration with building this thing was built around considering balance and CG, which is not shown on the kit. Okay, here's how that all worked. Whoa! Jeez, it went straight up. Yeah, I broke the prop. Well, that didn't last long. Well, after flying it the first time, I decided it needed lots of down thrust because it went straight up on launch 
and my elevator did nothing. So the easiest way was to just simply cut a notch in it, use some foam tack, tack it down, and put a couple of screws in it to hold it for sure. Because I am getting a little frustrated now, and you know how hard it is to fly while you're standing with your feet cemented to the ground. Can't turn. And the elevator does nothing, barely got it up. Couldn't turn with the rudder. There's not enough rudder on that thing to make a turn. Okay, now finding there's simply not enough control to overcome this motor and wind, I decided to increase the surface area of the rudder and elevators. I did it with foam tag, toothpicks, and foam board. Well, even though the ailerons are molded into the wing, and you got people that are probably going to put ailerons in the wing, I just didn't want to spend the time, cut them all out, add extra servos, try to wire all that in when I know how well three-channel gliders can handle. So this now should work, right? Here we go. All right. Let's see what happens now. Boy. I think I got it, man. Look at that. Kind of hard to turn here. Whoa, I'm gonna fall over being stuck in the snow. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Doggies. Now this might work better with a little bit smaller motor. I didn't have anything in between. And besides, I want this thing to crank. If at first you don't succeed, never give up. Well, that's it for this project, folks. It took some figuring out. All of this only took two days. And I like it. And if you decide to do something like this, you got an idea what's up. Can't wait to fly it again. Well, thanks a lot for watching, and God bless. This is Dave Herbert, the Night Flyer, and we'll see you on the next episode.